Okay, you can begin. Hello, I'm Ruby Parabuso, and my student number is 113636. My question is, do Premier League football churn so much that it's damaging the sport? That's my title. Nowadays, the salary of footballers are so high that just a few selected teams are able to get the best players, the top players, uh, the players that makes you win titles, the, the good players. Most of them, I think, in my opinion, are the ones that are damaging the sport because when they move what, to one team to another, they ask for a big salary. And if the, if the team wants him to join them, they have to pay this amount they ask it. If not, because this player will, make, uh, will, will be able to the team to win titles and gain more profits. This is the table in England, the wages. Yeah, yeah, to write there is an African player, Ivory Coast player. He's the best player, he's the best paid player in the history of Premier League. And he's the first one. The best English players, best play English men players are Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, John Terry, with wage of 6.5 million per year. And now Premier League footballers now earn an average of around 33,000 a week. And the average of the salary in the Premier League has doubled by has doubled in the last four years. I think it's not fair of when a big when a player moves to another team, he for example he, he found them he found there another player. Let's say uh, this player earns uh, 12 million pounds a year, and another three together earns uh, 10 thousand pounds a year, 10 million pounds a year. If why these three players earn less than him, for example, these three players could run more miles than him, could score more goals than him. This is one of the main things, I, in my opinion. There is damage in the sport. Uh, the Premier League revenue has grown as by two percent for achieving the two billion pounds on 2009-2010 season. We have here compared a compare with another sport. Roger Federer this is a tennis player. He earned $47 million a year. Jermaine O'Neill is a basketball player. He earned uh, $23 million a year. Alex Rodriguez is a baseball player. He earned uh, $32 million a year. And David Beckham, the football player, is the best player, is the best paid player in American League, Football League. He earned $6 million a year. This is the, the top three best paid players in the world. Somewhere at the top, there is an African player from Cameroon who earns 18 million pounds a year. And he earned an hourly rate of 2,000 pounds, 170 pounds. 200, sorry. 2,000, sorry. And the minimum rate for workers ages 21 and over in England is 6.8 pounds per hour and some other to earns uh, 2,000 per hour and then we have Cristiano Ronaldo in the top in the second one and then Messi here are the top leagues wages bills in 2009-2010 in the last <coughs> five years Chelsea and Man City has the, are the teams with more money in Premier League. They are, they are spending a lot more. As you can see, Chelsea in the top and then Man City. 
As I said, Premier League revenue has grown by 2%. Here, it's a bit of history. Uh, in 1970, Pelé, who is considered the, to the best player in the history of football, was paid at 7 million pounds, dollar, sorry. Michael Jordan, who is widely regarded as the best player in the history of basketball, was paid more than 30 million in million dollars in 1998 in his last career on Chicago Bulls. And Neymar, Brazilian player, 18, 18, 19 years old, is the eighth best paid player in the world with 19 years old. You can see in the world of football, salary of players is always increasing the salaries of players. And this causes an increase in inflation in player salaries. Nowadays, football is much more than a game. It, it is a mix of interest, uh, the manager and the players, and much. And they're, they're all involves money. Everything involves money. In my opinion, to just to conclude, uh, Premier League should put to a salary cap, uh, as the NBA does. A salary cap is when it exists a limit of a player's salaries in a team and the team can't exceed this limit. Um, Enrico, if, if they did, as you suggested, you know, if they cut the salaries, what would stop very good players from going elsewhere? <coughs> that's, the, uh, that's why it is increasing the inflation because the good players want always to earn more money. Mm -hmm. So it's not fair for the for like for us that they are uh, they are earning this amount of money and uh, the difference between this social group and them is is not, is much bigger. But surely it's supply and demand. If if you want a good player, you have to pay for a good player. Yes. If, if you want to win titles, you have to have a good player. And if you have a, if you to have a good player, you have to pay this amount. That's right. Put the slideshow back on, please. Thank you. Your question was to tell us whether it damaged the sport. You haven't mentioned any damage. All you've done is tell us that wages are going up. How has it damaged the sport? And, as I said, by your argument, by reducing the wages, you would damage the sport. Again, yeah, but, but no damage has been mentioned. No. All you've told us is wages go up. We have no evidence of any damage. What damage has it done? The damage is if people still want to earn this amount of money, the other players will not, like, will not, because they earn so much, so much, so less than him, than the other one, they will, they will, like, give up of the sport, and this can damage the sport, in my opinion. So, is football of lower quality now than five years ago because of wage increases? Yes. Why? Because now footballers are much interested in money, a lot more in money than just like do the show for the audience. They are moving. They are moving. For example, someone that told move for, for, the, for Russia for 18 million pounds, and he will never, he will never win a, a Champions League in Russia, for example. So your point is because the players are more interested in the wages yes. than the actual game yeah. itself. Yeah. And that's the damage, yeah. the lack of interest in the game. And do you have any evidence to support this? Yeah. Okay, you don't. Next slide, please. Right. Does this include sponsorship money? No. Next slide, please. Does this include sponsorship money? So, Federer won 47 million in tournament winners.